okay. I'm here. Well, a very good evening. Welcome to the men's 105 kilo class. Competition with 11 competitors here, 131 kilos, 16 and a half stone. And uh, amongst the uh, contenders tonight, uh, two Russians, Dmitry Klokov and also uh, Kachimura Akaya. Pretty well uh, matched, as you can see, in what we have here in the Disneyland Dome, a packed house. Let's meet the competitors. This is the first of two Iranians. This is uh, Mohammad Dresda Barari from the north of Iran, from the town of Sari. And here's his teammate, Nawab uh, Nasir Shalal, who comes right from the south, junior world bronze medalist three years ago. Kajimura Akayev is the reigning European champion, won that in uh, Kazan in April of this year. And uh, the Polish represented here in this class, not by Marcin Dovinga, the man who's won it for the last two, tie two years, but by Bartolomey Bonk, who was third in the Europeans in Kazan. Sergei Istabin represents Kazakhstan. He was third in the Asian championships this year. And so to the second of the Russians, the Olympic silver medalist, Dmitry Klokov, whose dad was a world champion back in uh, 1979 in, uh, I think, a very similar weight class. Obviously, the categories have changed since then. Mikhail uh, Aldzev uh, from Belarus, fourth in uh, Europe this year. And representing uh, Korea, this is Kim Chul-Min. No recent form, so interesting to see how he progresses. Posted a total of 405 kilos right up there. Gia Makabarayani of Georgia. Olymp uh, sorry, European silver medal. And uh, Georgia, who've got uh, a good record at these sort of weight classes. Oleksi uh, Torokti represents the Ukraine. He is the bronze medalist in Europe last year in Minsk. And completing the field and representing Uzbekistan, Ivan Efremov, runner-up in last season's Asian Games. A 21-kilo spread across the entry totals, the highest of the entry totals, well, 422 kilos from Khadzimur Vakayev of Russia. These are the past uh, champions, and I just mentioned Martin, Martin Dovenga, unfortunately out, unable to compete because of shoulder surgery. And that's a big loss for Poland. The world records here, well, the snatch, uh, 200 kilos set in the Olympics by Andrei Aramnov of Belarus. But here we can see the best lifts in the B group. Now, 214 uh, kilos. This is uh, Cornel Czeko from Poland. Well, he staggered around quite a bit to say that. Yeah, actually, that was a clean and jerk uh, rather than the uh, snatch right. attempt. Yeah, and uh, we'll, I think, see that eclipse by quite a margin, David, tonight in the A group. Yeah, 180 kilos is the best in the snatch phase by body weight in the B group, and that's 180 kilos of Vladimir Sedov of Kazakhstan. So once again, a very good evening and welcome to the Dome Disneyland uh, as we get underway with this 105 kilo championship of the world with Randy Strossen of Iron Mind and myself, David Goldstrom. So sit back and enjoy the action. Uh, this promises to be yet another competitive category here. Lots of opportunity and we start with 170 kilos on the bar for the first of two Iranian competitors. And this is Mohammad Dreza Barari from Sari in the north of his country, 23 years of age. Haven't seen much of him since the World Championships last year when he was in the top 15, total 377. And a good start towards his ambition of trying to total up to 401. It doesn't really blister this lift, but that doesn't matter. You don't get style points. He does the most important thing. It's a successful lift. Snatches in one motion. Bar goes up, body goes down. He stands up now and waits for the down signal. And this 
sport of weightlifting, one of three in which the Iranians will look for medals in the London 2012 Olympic Games. This and wrestling and also taekwondo. Those are their three main hopes, which, uh, if I've got it right, will all be in the XL Centre uh, in London, close to the Royal Docks and uh, oh, the Docklands Light Railway, if you want to get out there to see it, if you're lucky enough to have a ticket. But... Uh, Wrestling and weightlifting for sure there, I know that. Yeah, and I think the taekwondo won't be far away either. Okay. So now uh, the Korean has moved up over the years. I mean, he was a pretty good junior at 85 kilos, but that's sort of like seven years ago. Interesting to see what he can do here at 172. Terrific speed, very little adjustment with the feet. Happy with that, Randy? Absolutely. I also like to think that maybe we can keep this uh, little roll going here. Had some difficulty with the consistency and lifters here. Not the case so far. He sticks us. As you say, David, doesn't have to chase the bar after. Nice lift. And just to reiterate, uh, a very good lifter, actually, Vladimir Sedov of Kazakhstan, who two years ago in Goyang won the 94 kilo championship of the world, moved up by uh, Alexei Ni to the 105 kilos and produced a total of 385 in the B group. That isn't quite the best, 386 is, but he was superior in the snatch phase with 180 kilos, and that's what they're all chasing at the moment. So here comes the uh, second of the Iranians, the bar going to 175. Again, uh, not a lifter that we've seen much of for a couple of years. There's those big red weights, each 25 kilos. Col color coded so that everybody knows what the weight is on the bar instantly. So, Nabab uh, Nazir Shalal, who, unlike his teammate, comes from the south of his country, Iran which incidentally had snow three days ago. I'm reliably informed. <laughs> Winter has arrived in Tehran. Certainly not here in Disneyland and Paris. It's like spring here. And spring would be an appropriate word for the first element of that. Yeah, really, really powerful coil springs. He has to adjust at the bottom. What, my, what we mean by that is the bar and the body don't go to exactly the ideal landing places, and so you shift one or the other. In this case, the body gets moved under, it staggers forward a couple steps. That's fine. You know, it's not textbook, but it's good enough for three white lights. So, this is the representative from uh, Belarus, Mikhail Adzeev, 29 years of age, so experienced, fourth in Europe this year. He'd be about 15 to, 20, 15 to 17 kilos off the leaders in terms of posted totals, but that's pretty solid as a starter. Very fluid, very, very fluid. Watch this lift. We talked about the lifters having to make adjustments. He didn't. This is going to look as if he did it on rails. Look at this. Nice lift. This is the man who missed out on the bronze medal at the European Championships to the Polish lifter who's in this class tonight, Bartolomey Bonk, and he out, lifted, he missed out, I should say, by just body weight. So, Ivan Efremov going for third place in the snatch and the Uzbekistan team on the medal roster in the 94 kilo class earlier. Looks very tall and rangy, doesn't he? It looks as if he's got long arms, which can help in the snatch. Work against him, possibly, in the jerk. But you got to work with the body you have. Nice lift. Once again, that is very fluid. No, no jerky movements in this. Everything's going where it's supposed to. Well, this is a lot more like it. This is what first lift should be about. You know, uh, you've done them goodness knows how many times. And usually the coach will make sure that the opening one is something that you can readily accomplish. And then the pressure goes on. 
Right. The pressure goes on from the coach because he's pushing you to what he believes you can do, but he also is pushing you in the context of what everybody else is doing. So now Barari, first man to take a second attempt, and this is a five kilo increase. Still five kilos short of uh, Sedov, the best man in the B group earlier on today. Look at those arms, right out at the extremity of the bar. Misses it behind, probably because he um, was swinging the bar in about the midpoint of the pull. Watch right here, if he bangs it with his hips, they'll tend to send in an arc, making a glide over behind his head. So that's the first reversal. But you know, this is this is probably the longest successful streak we've had all week. And this uh, 105 group, looking at some openers here, 190 for Akayev. That'll be interesting. He's the big snatcher in the group on paper, and you see it reflected in that that opener, that stated opener. Lifters, of course, aren't tied to those those openers. They just require you to put something in, and they can change. In fact, they can change it twice before they come out. And Barari having to uh, follow himself here. So, moves on to the stage for a third attempt. Very difficult to uh, really gauge you know, how he is and where he is. I mean, he's better already with the 170 than he did in finishing in 14th place in the World Championships in Antalya last year. But to be perfectly honest, talking to our Iranian colleagues, they were saying that, you know, whereas they were delighted to get the bronze medal earlier this afternoon in the 94 kilos, they, they don't have huge expectations in this class. They do tomorrow afternoon with the men's super heavyweights, though. Right. Yeah, see, well, they've got their finger on the pulse, and they're telling us what they're really thinking, you know, as far as gauging how their team will do. Just not, this is not, just not a world-class performance snatch-wise. Yeah, just by I mean, class. he lost it behind and now loses it in front, effectively. But, as I said, he's only 23, and we move along now to the first attempt for Ukraine, and this is Oleksiy Torochty. Torochty, who bronze medaled in the European Championships in Minsk in 2010, so last season, and actually did a total there of 396 and made 50% of his lifts. And generally, when you look down, he's he's been a 50%er re in recent times, not better than that. So on the basis of what I've just said, Randy, he definitely needs to make the first attempt. Nice lift. See, he listened to you, David. And one of the indications is that this is well done. Watch his feet as he finishes the lift. He doesn't have to chase the bar. He doesn't have to move his feet front and back. He just put things where they're supposed to be. Has to pull them together a little bit for the referee to get the down signal and nicely executed. Best numbers for him? Well, they came up in the Europeans in 2009 when he did a 181 and a four, uh, 225 for a 405. Kaya, look at that Russia wrestling shirt. <laughs> what that's about. And just to separate these two in a sort of different way, that's a Kaya with the blue shorts, and his teammate flockoff has got the red. He was certainly relaxed looking, wasn't he? I mean, for a guy about to start the world championships. Sergei Istamin for Kazakhstan, the Asian bronze medalist of the current season 178 opener wow and that was easy well they've got some positive momentum here tonight after that performance of Ilya Ilyan in the 94 kilo class and I can't help but think that would fire up the team here it comes nice lift you know we're seeing some well executed snatches snatch can look really ugly you get someone who's not talented at the left not athletic it's going to look awful plus they'll miss it 
These guys are lifting pretty big weights by now. Yeah, we're up to 178 and uh, doing it well. So Kim Chilmen coming in for uh, 178. Now this is a six kilo increase. He's currently in eighth place, but this would whip him up into bronze medal position. Just to say, remember, we haven't got to 180 yet, so still set off from the B group, the former world champion at 94 kilos, leading at the moment. Oh, what a pity. How close was that, Randy? Yeah, I tried, tried to save it. You know, that balance point is really narrow on the snatch, and you can see he's fighting to hang on to this. We'll see when he hits the bottom position. It goes a little back. He pulls it forward, and he <laughs> actually overcorrects a little bit in yeah. the shifting of his body into the bar. He's, he's got one more go, and he handled the weight, so yep. hopefully he can, you know, just come out and get this... Absolutely spot perfect. You just got to put the bar in his body in the right spot. That, that's all. Mm. You know? Oh, if it was that easy. <laughs> <laughs> well, think about it. He's got to rip 178 kilos off the ground to approximately chest height, reverse directions with his body, get underneath, catch it on extended arms, and stand up. That's all. And it's all done in less than a second. And those of you who'd like to be... Uh, coached by Coach Strossen. Just, uh, <laughs> Send your money <laughs> to <laughs> P.O. Box. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so he's got to follow himself, 178, which uh, gives us a moment just to uh, reflect on this particular class. There have been some really good winners over the years. Uh, Andre Aramanov, of course, uh, he won the Olympic title and in 2007, but he's run into... Uh, a different sort of set of problems. Marcin Dewenga, though, it's a pity not, he's not here because he's won this title on three occasions. Dmitry Klokov, who's in tonight's field, won this title back in, two, in 2005. So Kim, with bags of time, more than half a minute. Sorry, I think it's pretty heavyweight for him. Uh, it might show up in the instant replay. He will try to break the bar off the platform to get it going and then actually start the lift. Reminiscent of Naeem Suleimano who used to do that and just does not get the elevation on this. So we move on to 179 kilos on the bar, and this is still only going to go into silver medal position. Klockoff, who besides being a good lifter, muscular physique and everything, you can count on him, I think, to, to inject a little drama into the evening later tonight. Uh, could maybe be a reserve for the Lithuanian drama team. <laughs> Not sure who that was on camera with uh, Dr. Thomas Ion. The man on the left, uh, Dr. Ion, is the president of the International Weightlifting Federation. Georgia, Gia Makavariani, European runner-up this year. Well, he might look around, but it was pretty rough around the edges there. Yeah, not, not pretty to look at it. He might like to end that the way Piros Dimas did, looking back and forth, but the execution certainly wasn't uh, a la Piros Dimas. Absolutely. So, traditional little prayer looking for a bit of guidance and a bit of help nothing wrong in that 180 we're on the same weight as the b group but body weight would only put him into second place if he gets this and this would be very good 
guy's faster than the bar, huh? He is really fast. Pumps, Good the, pumps the hips, I'm sorry, David, to get going. Build up a little extra velocity there, catch something on the rebound, and then when we say fast, that means really not so much the bar coming off the platform fast, but accelerating up and then the body going really fast under the bar. Watch this with the top boom underneath. And he goes, as I said, to second place because Sedov, who uh, has got 180 from the B group, is mega light. I mean, you know, he weighed in at, what, 94 kilos. He was literally just over the 94 kilo limit. Had to drink some water, probably. <laughs> now, Azef for Belarus. It looked so easy until the bar came tumbling down. He just doesn't quite get this fixed overhead. Pulls it up, reverses directions really easily. This will give us a good idea of how precise the snatch has to be. Little shrug, that's how you finish the pull on the snatch. People think it was a deadlift and then an upright row. It's not. It's more like a deadlift and then a violent shrug as far as the pull goes. No arms. It's all back at the end. The bar cleaned off by the Lotus for Ivan Epremov, who, as you can see, is going to take a five kilo increase here on his second attempt. Still inside what he achieved in Guangzhou last season in the Asian Games when he was the runner up there. That was never going to happen from the moment he lifted that off the stage. <laughs> Actually, had some hope for it, David. So, what, what was it that caught your eye right away? Just have a look at it. The, the, the balance went. Well, yeah. I mean, you could just, he was actually not balanced. As that bar came off, he was losing his balance the moment that he started to lift that bar. I could see the bar tilting, but I thought no big deal for him as far as that goes. But, I mean, he never does get the lockout. So, straight away on stage here, Alzef to try and save here 180. And still set off. The 94 kilo lifter effectively still leading this class. And that'll only take him into fourth place because of body weight. But what it does do is it keeps him nearer to the action. But remember, you've still got Akayev to start. You've got Bartolomé Bonk for Poland to start. Also to get involved, you've got uh, Dimitri Klokov. So... That was a great shot right before that, David, showing how close the bar has to be to the body for efficient lifting. That's also, by the way, why some of these lifters have pretty scraped up shit. They really, really prefer no contact, but the bar needs to be very close. Yeah, and... Uh, Plenty of honored guests here, including the French Minister of Sport, who's here to witness these championships. That's a chap called David Doulet, two-time Olympic judo champion. Alexei uh, Torochti for the Ukraine. Ukraine have got a great record. Razorenov, Denis Gottfried, they've all won this title back in the late 90s. Torochti will do awfully well to join them today. But he's made 181, so well done. Good shot of the illustrating the second pulls. It's called the weightlifting um, bar from oh maybe mid thigh height on up. It's where the it's, the bar is really accelerating. It's where the lift is either like in the make or break zone as far as the pull goes. This coach's boss is studying the boards. Ivan Korvi, he was the coach of Kaki Kakizvili, among other lifters. 
Also, the, you know, the missing Simon uh, Kolesky from, from the last class, sometimes in this class. Studying the board, who's going to lift what, how many attempts so that they can uh, gauge their lifters' progress in the warm up room. So, Istamin on 182. And this for the lead in the snatch. I noticed that his grip was quite a bit narrower than some of the other guys. You might wonder why. If you don't have very flexible shoulders or if you have long arms, you're going to be most likely to go out collar to collar with that grip. You could see he was significantly narrower than that. So Tarokti leads. Buck off pacing. He's going to start to turn into the, the carnivore. We're going to see Mr. Paleo Man here before the evening's over, I think. Tremendous crowd. I have never seen a crowd at a World Weightlifting Championships that has been demonstrated such great sportsmanship and enthusiasm. Have you, David? I mean, there's, there's no partisanship. There's tremendous enthusiasm. They've helped lifters. They've rallied behind guys. And of course, they got the reward last night. So, it's been uh, coming out here. For 182 to go into the lead. I'm not sure he seemed fully committed at the end of that lift. Did you think, David? It looked like just slight hesitation at the bottom, and you've got to just snap on that bar, stretch it. It's got to be violent at the end. Really aggressive finish. And the bar going to 184 now for uh, Mr. Macavariani of Georgia. Quite the send off. That's just to adrenalize him a little bit. Kilo increase. The second attempt for the Georgian. Oh, oh. Boy, I thought he's going to end up going over. You can see the right knee punching into the platform. He sticks with the left, and it was worth it. It's a three white light success. Yeah, but not exactly as the diagram suggested yeah. in the training manual. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, theory and practice diverge, but where they converge is that the ultimate goal is, you know, the one he achieved, which is make the lift. So in that sense, it's good. So where we are now, as you see this man pick up 184, that's 16 kilos short, nonetheless, of the world record that was set in the Olympic Games by Andre Aronoff, who was subsequently uh, disqualified for a doping infringement, which just taints these records a little bit because he also holds the overall world record. But this is the European bronze medalist at 185, Bartholomew Bonk, in a way. I don't mean this disrespectfully, substituting for Martin Dewenga, the defending champion, who can't be here. But that was excellent. And you know, maybe without the shadow of Martin and having the stage to himself, this could be his night. Nice lift. Very nice lift. And, and Martin, of course, is just a stellar snatcher. Bartolome, mature, 27, been around a long time, moved up the weight categories. Junior world champion back seven years ago as we now revert to, the, again, the Iranian who 
prior to coming on stage this evening who had achieved the most of the pair. Whoa. <laughs> I don't know. I was starting to think he was going to hang on to that, David. That would have watch an elbow go. He could have thrown in the towel a lot earlier on that. Yeah, I'm pleased that he had a really good crack at this. Watch this. Too bad we can't also see the hips, yeah. but <laughs> you can see from the reaction, obviously, weight he expected to make, weight he has no doubt made many times, I guess, in the past. So Epimov coming up for his third attempt, but still makavariani has got a third attempt. roxy has got another attempt, the Georgian and the Ukrainian, and the two Russians, Klokov and Akeyev, yet to start. So Efremov, 185. Now this is for first place in the snatch ranking. And this is this is getting to where it could be very interesting for the bronze medal, perhaps. Unfortunately, that leaves him on 180. Uh, I thought we were going to see an instant replay on that in slow motion. Well, you know, now things are going to start to change. It's really going to heat up now. Well, what I was going to say was uh, that basically you've got Akayev, Bartolomey Bonk, Russia and Poland, and you've got Dmitry Kolokov. If I, any of those mess up, then that's why getting this 185 for Tarofti here could be very useful because he'd be on the edge of the bronze medal. Yeah, I mean, it's a good point. Just because they're well ahead of him, their lifts aren't a given. And you're absolutely right. There's yeah. no guarantee they're going to make their lifts. And I think this is a, a good mark for Tarokti here. This is better than we've ever seen him do before. So, again, Ukrainian tradition. Sitting on two successes so far. Uh, you know, it was looking good, I thought, David, until that right arm unlocked. He comes off the, the platform very smoothly, accelerates the bar, gets under there, but just cannot really fix that right arm. Watch the right arm in the bottom position. Just not quite there. And Dmitry Klokov now, the first of the two Russians to come out to take his first attempt at 187 kilos. As I said in the introduction, uh, son of Vecheslav, who won a world title back in 1979. That's a very commanding figure on the world championship no! stage. The runner-up last year to Marcin Dovenga lost the title by body weight. Made five out of six lifts. And this is a relatively conservative opener for her for him he could do 192 193 even so this for a decent lead and as Randy said often the showman but not yet too early in the piece to start rejoicing or celebrating and drives up here just a pace forward to settle European champion not this season that was taken by his teammate who's yet to open his account Akayev but the crowd getting behind the Georgian now Makavariani who's well looked particularly <laughs> ungainly in getting his lifts but that said he's made two out of two 180 184 187 for the lead <laughs> and that's the best of the three for a man who doesn't have a great record at high percentage lifting but that is 187 and you're looking at the leader of the competition and this packed hall here. Everything totally sold out. Some 16 euros 
the ticket for the competition, 20 if you come for the whole day. And just the whole performance here was so much better. He was more balanced. So Arkeyev taking an interest, but Arkeyev not going to come into 190. That's what he posted. And Bartholomew Bonk coming in now. Now, the first snatch was very good. This is four kilos up. And this is definite improvement if he can do this. Half a minute buzzer. For the lead. Oh, and just the movement of the bar taking it behind. He's got one more go. Now, Klokov wants 192, Arkeyev wants 190, and that means that Bonk is almost certainly going to have to follow himself here. And then it'll be down to the two Russians. Just at this particular moment, it's uh, Gia Mav. Makabariani of Georgia who leads he's in the lead in the snatch position he's got the gold medal position at the moment Dmitry Klokov who's had one success at 187 he's in the silver medal position he is just the heavier 104.60 Makabariani weighed in at exactly 104 kilos and Bonk has decided to take a little bit more time to get ready there is an inherent risk in this because if he pushes the bar up and he doesn't make it, then he's going to drop all the way back down to 185. And at the moment, Bartolomeu Bonk in third place with that uh, 185. So you could say having secured the bronze medal in the first half of the competition that he's prepared to take the risk. But now the reigning European champion bronze medalist at the Olympic Games at 94 kilos. This is Khachimurat Akayev, a silver Olympic medal, also at 94 kilos, back in Athens 2004. So quite an achiever. Real explosion from Akayev. And we are now 10 kilos short of the Snatch World Record. I don't honestly think that we're heading there, even though Khadji Morad has two attempts at his disposal. So he goes gold. Makavariani drops to second, clock off to third, Bonk off the podium. So Bonk has to try to get back onto the podium and is going for 190. He's bought a little time to prepare for this. Failed at 189. 190. If he gets it, he goes into the lead because he's lighter than Arkayev of Russia. Poland versus Russia. And the consequence of that is that he is left in fourth place and at the moment is five kilos off the leader and it could get worse. As the bar goes to 192 for uh, Dmitry Klokov, it's Russia now. So it's Klokov in red versus Akayev in blue.
a little bit of the showmanship. Back in 2005, he had one of those best days of your life when he won the world title. Total up 419. He had an even better day in terms of kilos lifted in the Olympic Games in Beijing. He lifted all six, this man, for 423, but he still only ended up with the silver medal. Lost the Olympic title to Andre Aramnov, who I'd mentioned already. And is a man who's just not available to uh, Belarus anymore after that uh, doping infringement, serving his time for that crime. And Akayev goes to 195, and this is a duel between the two Russians. They are basically very evenly matched here. So, Akayev, 195, and this is the weight he lifted in Kazan in the European Championships. <laughs> Only his second attempt. Makavariani in third place, but this would pull away from the Georgian. If Akayev gets this, he would be eight kilos ahead of the Georgian in the bronze medal position. Oh, yes. Both of these Russians really on fire now. Explodes this off the stage. Looked very, very relaxed early on in the warm-up room. Things going his way. And from blue to red now for 196 kilos. Now, this is more than Dmitry Klokov lifted in the Russian Nationals by a kilo in preparation for this competition. So 196. He's heavier than his teammate, so he's got to go the extra kilo. This is his third and final attempt to move from silver to gold. personal best for Dmitry Klokov who makes sure that bar stays on the platform which it must alert to that so Dmitry Klokov three out of three and Akayev resisting the temptation perhaps to go for a world record, but to focus on winning the competition. And he needs to build kilos in this first half of the competition. Hachimura Akayev. Look at this from Klokov. They are head to head. These two very strong Russians. And he just makes it look equal easy, doesn't he? So 198, and this is a new mark. This is just two kilos away from the world record. So it just gives you an idea of the quality of these men as athletes. This would, if he does it, put him 11 kilos ahead of the man in third place. Oh, absolutely perfect. What a sequence. What a sequence. 
Russia one, Russia two, but every time that Dmitry Klokov has asked Arkeyev, his teammate, for an answer, his teammate has answered, and that's absolutely brilliant. The two Russians have gone three out of three, and they are commanding this competition at the halfway stage. That is a spectacular lifting in this opening snatch phase by the two Russians. And the goal goes to the European champion, Khachimura Akayev, 198 ahead of Dmitry Klokov by two kilos. And then the third place man, Makavariani, 187 ahead by two kilos ahead of Poland's Bartolomy Bonk in fourth place on 185. So two battles developing here for the medals as you look at Akayev, the man in blue, and after a long time of really suffering some poor snatch phases, finally we get a really fantastic demo uh, demonstration of lifting. Akayev takes the gold, two kilo advantage. There you can see Makavariani in third place, 187. Work to do, but he's in competition there with Bartolomey Bonk for the overall bronze. Tarokti of the Ukraine, not out of it either. And set off from the B group, very, very light. Look at that, 94 kilo, 65. Well done to him for being sixth in the It's all about the Supers. Two o'clock Central European time and 4.30 Central European time. Those two finales back for the clean and jerk after this. On this men's competition at the halfway stage, the Russians in command. To get us underway, this is Sergei Istomin of Kazakhstan. Well, some fairly unusual elements in that lift. First of all, this lifter is tall for the class, which is basically a way of saying thin. Nice, clean, stands up and down very wide grip. I mean, he can almost snatch with that and then a power jerk. And the tape is coming off his thumb. Thumbs usually tape because the hip grip can tear the skin by your nail otherwise. It won't kill you, but it's, it uh, doesn't look pretty and can be a little painful. Mikhail Aldzeev who at the halfway stage, uh, Adzev in uh, eighth place with only 180 kilos. But this is all very tight uh, in this second half here. Not much more than 10 kilos covering the whole field on their opening weights. And it's not only the technique that deserted him there, but I don't know, the, the, the desire didn't seem to be there. Yeah, he didn't seem to be a, like a raging inferno there, did he? No. As far as motivation. He might just be keeping it within himself. Everything here is different uh, than, than the last attempt. You're going to see a split jerk. You're going to see maybe, I think what you're touching on, Dave, doesn't seem to be fully committed as far as driving his body under that bar, getting under the weight. You drive the bar up, but you have to drive your body down under it. And you, got to be committed to that and if you're tired you know particularly you have some scary thoughts weighing on your brain yeah i'm just looking at the body language there between coach and lifter and it, it, you know there were not a lot of positives coming yeah and here, here's the tiger kind of pacing in the cage akaya the leader going in unlike his teammate he lets his lifting sort of speak for him I love the way he's wearing the uh, russian wrestling shirt as opposed to the russian weightlifting shirt is that a message <laughs> in, in, in room letters and gold and yeah. pick me pick me to rumble in London. Yeah, well, I, maybe he can't read it. Maybe he thinks it says something else. No, I wouldn't be so uh, unkind to him. Actually, what was very interesting when he won the European Championship, um, and there were a bevy of reporters because obviously it was in Russia, and one of the reporters asked him a question, and he went into, as I learned afterwards, because obviously I didn't understand what he was saying. A dissertation on life that went on for 15 minutes really without a second question yeah <laughs> have to tell his view was later <laughs> now make amends please mr alzeev much more fire just really go for this
Well, the clean was much smoother. Obviously, the jerk worked at least to the point they supported the bar overhead, but I don't think by very much. I think the margin of success in this jerk is pretty slim. Let's watch when he drives this bar up. Ideally, the arms will hyperextend and lock out and be rock solid, and his are neither walking around with the weight. Made it, but not by a lot. He's got one attempt left, and he's, what, 390, so he's 15 kilos short of his end of total. It's not a problem, but interesting to see whether we can make a third attempt really count. But now Barari for Iran. <coughs> and I was going to say, I suspect these two Iranian lifters are going to be a little bit more comfortable with the clean and jerk. We, we've already passed the B session, too. It didn't take long. No. Yeah, that was uh, Shikil of uh, Poland who lifted 214. Actually, you say we've passed the... Not in the clean jerk, we haven't. No, the total. In the total. total. Right. Not quite like that. Yeah, although for first attempt, I don't know how easy it was. He's got those high-tech uh, latest thing knee wraps are typical of the Iranian team. They seem to work just fine. Nice long pull on this. Looks like he's doing a little work to stand up. Deep breath. Pushes that up. Well, you know, it's pretty solid. Secures his total, which is uh, very good. He's got a 381. Now that's four kilos up on last year when he only made two out of six in Turkey. So that's progress. And here's his teammate. Nabab uh, Nazir Shalal, who did considerably better than Barari. He was in seventh place, 180 kilos he's bringing forward, which is not bad from the snatch phase. Very, very quick set of the jerk. Might have worked against him, and because he missed the jerk, everyone will say, oh, he should have paused longer. Some people don't take a lot of time getting set up in the transition. That's going to occur right now. Transition between the clean and the jerk. Pretty much moves from one to the other and doesn't miss the jerk by a lot. And it's a position thing, but he does miss it. So it looks as if he's going to have to come out and follow himself. The two Iranians, the younger by a year. That's uh, Nazir Shalal. And continuing your geography lesson of Iran, Randy comes from a place called Akhavoz uh, in the south, pretty close to the Iraq border. Now, I know I've had a really fine teacher, so don't take it personally if I flunk the test afterwards. <laughs> little mental rehearsal there. I was going to seeing you know what it feels like, reminding himself what the motor skills are involved, what's the path that he's going to go through the bar. Well, I can tell you tomorrow in the Super Heavyweights, we're going to take a journey around the South Pacific. Yeah, that was interesting. That, that was to help loosen up his shoulders at the last minute. Sort of like doing a dislocate. That's what Horace Bagheri was lifting his arms before to just kind of stretch out the shoulder joint again. Well, it's the first time I could actually say that the crowd didn't quite get behind him as perhaps <laughs> we've experienced. You're going to get worn out sooner or later, don't you think? Well, you see, his mate's got a a total and I'm sure both of them want to go home with a total here and a ranking good clean took that little bit of extra time brings the left foot forward and completes yeah really punches through on that so if his shoulders bothering a little bit David I'm sorry to be interrupted you see him he reach around right away and you know, grab his trap shoulder area it's on his right side when he completes this left. Punches through on this, which is nice. Dip, drive, there it is, locks it out. There you can see how you push your head through. Now the, he's going to reach up. There it is. Good thing, though, is that, you know, what they discussed backstage, they actually then went and executed. Now, here's the man who's in bronze medal at 
position at the halfway stage. Makavariani of Georgia, but not so strong in this second half. That's why he's coming in at 212. Ultimately, you know, he's got men who are going to open up on 220. So this is where, having got a bronze medal in the snatch phase, things are against him in terms of getting medals in clean and jerk or indeed in overall. 187 he's got, so he really needs to use this cushion. Well, he does the most important thing at this stage, which is have a successful lift, get on the board, get a total. Now he can start to pile on the kilos if he can. Yeah, because he's just under the 400 kilo mark uh, in the lead. Well, it wasn't elegant in the beginning of the snatch phase, but what I have to say is that, you know, actually, technically, his lifting is getting little by little a little better. Yeah. And now to uh, Kim. He's got a run of four good lists going too, which is really nice to see. Yeah. Kim, who's way down in 12th place at the moment. So at least he's secured his total. There can be a little worse when you come to a championship like this, when you fail to get a total and then you've got a, a long journey back home. Watch his elbows now as he gets set. See how he lifts them up for the jerk. Unlike the press where you drop them down, ideally you lift your elbows up for the jerk. Makavariani, by the way, who leads at the moment, just a kilo short of what he lifted to earn the silver medal in the European Championships. Incidentally, just uh, over the week, uh, nothing but praise for the Elico facilities and equipment used here at these World Championships. All of that side seems to have worked very well. In fact, the competition hall, although it's sort of squeezed in, and there was a lot of fear that the warm-up room, which is extremely tight, would be difficult. It actually has worked. Yeah. Have you made it over to the training hall at all? Uh, that's big, isn't it? 47 platforms, each equipped with uh, Lyco set and squat racks. Bartonomy Bonk coming in at uh, 215 kilos. Now, this interests me because he has dropped down five kilos. Now, that's quite a considerable reduction. And it does suggest, perhaps, that you're not quite as confident. Although that looked very good. And that did too. You know, they probably realized the wise thing here is to take the road of better safe than sorry. You can always put more weight on the bar, but you can't take it off. Lifted 222 in the cleaning jerk of the World Championships, in which he finished fourth a year ago. But that was really nice on the clean, yeah, very economical. Is. Yeah, it just rams this thing up. No doubt about that lift. See, I'm putting him in to overtake Makavariani for one, to, you know, to go for the bronze medal. And I suppose, you know, Makavariani, 212, he's coming in 213, so he's closed the gap. He was two kilos down, he's now a kilo ahead. Efremov weighed in at 103.35. Uh, That's lighter than Bartholomew Bonk, which means that Efremov now momentarily at least goes into the lead in the clean and jerk. As the lifter is dipping and driving, you could see the ends of the bars flexing. That's intentional. The bar is designed to do that. So five kilo increase here for Sergei Istomin from Kazakhstan. Just trying to push himself up here into the 390 total area. Uh, <laughs> he 
it is oh. but this is a collective woo from the crowd because we don't really expect that partly because of the very quick set now because of the very wide hand spacing and partly because it's a power jerk now one judge didn't like this let's have a look i don't look. see the infraction here. i can't from that angle no might Maybe just happen too fast i don't still don't see anything wrong with it i can see a little shaking but i can't see a press out no, i don't either don't get that at all but anyway it doesn't matter two white lights to red yep. he gets the lift so leading bartolome bonk at the moment on 400 second makavariani 399 overall bronze at the moment sergey istamin with 393 and Adzeev, the man who hasn't exactly expired inspired either randy or myself today coming out for 215 and this is not going to be good enough for a medal in the clean and jerk and even if he gets it i don't think he's going to survive in third place overall for too long too many yet to start Watch the jerk. I mean, once again, there's not a lot of reserve on this jerk. I mean, he doesn't have great lockout. Maybe he doesn't have uh, tremendous ability to, je to generate the force to drive the bar up and his body under it. But the, r the right arm especially doesn't seem to want to lock out that well. And looks like he makes it, but just barely. Yeah, which is why his body language suggests that he's not a man of huge confidence on this particular stage, on this particular day. It may change in the future. Yeah, and, and what you're saying is interesting because actually it's rational, it's for good reason. The jerk is little suspect. So Makavariani now putting six kilos on here. Pretty big jump. It, that suggests some confidence. Yeah, that's a kilo over what he lifted in Europe, which I have as uh, his best there was 217 best ever there and so what he is doing he's actually defying the note that i wrote earlier on today which said this man is a low percentage lifter and he's turning ah. this all around <laughs> <laughs> how dare you write that Good night, huh, David? Yeah, because he leads the game. Yeah, and he's doing the Dimas uh, look from side yeah. to side. He's ready. To, he's ready to win the Olympics. You know, in his mind. Well, compare him to the Belarus lifter. I stole a car. You know, that looked completely different. I mean, this yeah. man has belief. He has desire. Yeah. I mean, he may technically not be the best lifter in the group, but he's getting the job done. And as I say, he's defying those low percentage notes that I wrote, which were based on, you know, really what he's done yeah. in recent competitions. You know, he's a, you know, last year, 2009, he was like three out of six, two out of six, but five out of five, I mean, you've got to take your hat off to him now. 4.05 for Makavariani, and he actually had proposed 4.12, so clearly, the bar goes to 220. What's very interesting about weightlifting also is the fact that all these entry totals were actually put in, a, you know, more than a week ago. Right. And an awful lot can happen yeah. in the space of a week to your condition in the training hall. You can go up, you can also go down. Now, clock off. Silver medal position at the halfway stage with 196. What you make of that? It's good, and he's, he's telling them, okay, that's the first one. 
fairly conservative. I think wanted to make sure he had a total was on the board. He's got he's chasing his uh, his teammate, and he's trying to avoid making an error, of bombing out, putting too much pressure on himself, limiting what he can do. So I think he chose to have a conservative opener, and he succeeds with that. And of course, with the 196 that he brings forward from the first half, goes clearly into the gold medal position. Now to Rochti for the Ukraine. It's in the clean and jerk phase, Randy, that people like in years gone by, Igor Razorenov and Gottfried used to come from behind to actually take this title. So interesting what Tarokti can do here. 220. Yeah. Power jerk. Yeah, he, he's kind of showing, you know what, I'm strong too. Don't count me out of this. Nice left. So brings forward 181. Pretty routine clean. It's going to get set. Bang. Look at that. And I tell you what, the crowd in the hall were impressed. So just at the moment, in the lead, Dmitry Klokov, 4.16, silver medal overall, Makavariani, 4.05. Third place, Bartolome Bonk still has two attempts left, 400 kilos. But momentarily, we pause for Barari of uh, Iran. The bar going to 221 for him. And this would put him into first place in the clean and jerk and maintain his position in the top 10 overall. Well, it was a second attempt, and he could have one more go at that, but he didn't really catch it on or catch it and get it onto his shoulders. So you can have a couple of minutes. You can just see it here. Kim of Korea. Going for an eight kilo uh, increase here to take him into the 390s. This would take him up to 393 and would move him up to lead the clean and jerk and also into the top 10 in seventh place. Ooh, oh, stuttered. Oh, really hard. He can't do that. Now, this will be interesting just to look on the replay here because I. Bartolome <laughs> Bonk. That relatively conservative opener of Bartolome's now beginning to make a little bit more sense. This is a six kilo increase. The leader at the moment is. Dmitry Klokov, but Makavariani is in second place on 405. This would take Bonk up into second place overall. 406. And he also fails in the first phase here on the clean. And he's now putting his chances of a bronze medal a little bit in jeopardy as a result of that failure. just sp springs off the shoulder here as he goes back on his heels. So Efremov. Uzbekistan. So another man trying to get into the lead here on 221 in the clean and jerk because this is the way that's required for the gold medal position. Nope. 
And this has suddenly become a barrier for quite a few. But that's a failure at 221. Interesting to see what Tarokhti of the Ukraine can add, because as these men run out of their second attempts, it will give him a chance to try and close the gap on the men who were ahead of him in the second half, or I should say in the first half of the competition. Tarokhti was on 181. Makavariani was on 187. So 221 has become something of a wall here. Khajimoret uh, Akayev of Russia, the leader at the halfway stage, yet to start. Barari at uh, 221, third and final attempt. He has got a total of 381, but of course this 221, if he gets it, then of course he does move into the gold medal position in the clean and jerk. That would be a terrific consolation prize if he was to do that, and then things went his way and he ended up with uh, maybe a medal. But it's unlikely. Just uses the bounce there to get onto his shoulders, but petrol running out in his tank as well. Oh, that's a really good piece of fighting now. If he can hold it there, needs to wait for the down signal. That has come. Well, the crowd have really appreciated the effort. It's two to one against, sorry, two to one in favor, which makes it a good lift. So let's have a look at this to see whether there was a press out infringement. Really difficult to see from this angle. There's a lot of wobbling around there, but I can't see a press out. Those arms look locked out. And it doesn't matter because he's got it. He's got a total of 391. More on that in a moment because this is. Bartolomé Bonk's last attempt. This man in fourth place at the moment. Now, if he lifts this, he goes first in the clean and jerk and second overall. But that was a very costly failure at 221. Yeah. Has to work for the clean, but he's there. Big effort required to punch this above his head, which he does. Brings that left foot forward to be in line. That looks pretty good. And the white lights put him into the lead in the clean and jerk. And an overall medal position there. 221. Just a kilo short of what he lifted in Antalya in the clean and jerk half of the competition. But at the moment, he's sitting on a total of 4.06. And 4.06 is his highest competition achievement as we see the man who leads at the halfway stage to come out to take his first attempt at 2.22. This is 15 kilos short of the world clean and jerk record set by Alan Chagayev of Bulgaria. <laughs> No worries there. And immediately goes back into the lead with a total of 420 kilos. And now 
Have a look at this. This is really good. Very quick. Quick split. Strong overhead. Going about his work uh, quietly now. This would be incredible for Makavariani. This is for six out of six. He's in fourth place at the moment, so this is to go into the leading clean and jerk and overall third. He's behind Bartolome Bonk, who is trying to overtake Bonk at the moment, currently in second place, so this is crucial. Five out of six, it's been a brilliant evening so far for him. Can he finish it off? My goodness gracious me, he has. He has, he's made six out of six. And on occasions, it may not have looked pretty, but the Georgian has done it. Gia Makavariani, the European champion, has followed up his silver medal performance with a total of 409 kilos. And how good is this? Look how hard he worked for this. First place in the clean and jerk. Third place overall. And that's nine kilos up on what he did in Kazan. It's his best ever total of 105 kilos on a competition stage. And now we revert to Mr. Efremov. Now, again, Efremov... If he lifts this 222, because of his body weight, he will go into the lead in the clean and jerk. This is what he's got his eyes on, the Uzbek. A medal in the clean and jerk. Not to be. The weight really telling there when he tried to put it over his head and... And the weight, too great on this occasion. So the loader's making sure that the bar is all clean and sanitized there because from lifter to lifter you get bits of skin and sometimes some blood. So really important the job they do. And now, Nazir Shalal, 223, what a moment for him. Never mind what he's doing in terms of the total, but first in the clean and jerk, that would be some achievement if he can go into first place here in the clean and jerk. Very big question he's asking of himself here. He's got the clean. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Amazing, amazing. Iran producing competitors in these heavyweight classes. And that is a terrific achievement. That's a heck of a, that's a 12 kilo increase from the second attempt, which was successful. I mean, that is 403 kilos he's totaled. And he's up into fifth place. And that is two kilos beyond what he posted as his aspired total. Well, this competition isn't over yet. So the clean and jerk is led by Iran. In silver medal position is Makavariani of Georgia. In bronze is Akayev. And Klokov still waiting in the wings. And this is Kim. Eleven kilo increase on his successful first attempt, and he's cleaned it. And he goes into the lead in the clean and jerk. Well, what an amazing competition this is. The overall title is the treasured title, but the clean and jerk offers huge 
compensation to one or two lifters who were too far off the pace at the halfway stage but my goodness the gold medal at the moment in the hands of Kim in terms of the clean and jerk 224 so Kim of Korea in the lead in the clean and jerk the Iranian Nazir Shalal in silver medal position, the bronze, Makovariani now, and Dmitry Klokov with 2.25, second attempt. This to go first and first, ahead of Akayev, his teammate, to lead the clean and jerk and to lead the overall. off cleans and jerks and he made that look so simple so 421 that's the total for uh, clock off uh, Kayev has now got 420 is in second place overall So, places changing all the time at the moment. Makabariani still in third overall, but he's out of the medals in the clean and jerk, of course. The phone is already ringing. I don't know why it took so long. Because we know he wants much more. So, the chess game really now beginning to play out between the two Russians. Two hundred and twenty-eight kilos. The uh, next weight asks for Akayev, for whom this will be a second attempt. This will be a six-kilo increase. Uh, so, Klokov just got the lead for Russia. This man about to try and take it back for himself. So this will be for 426 kilos. And that is a kilo more than he lifted to take the European title when he got six out of six. And he's heading that way again. What a competition. Makavariani with six out of six. Klokov could get six out of six. So could Akayev. And this is real quality lifting here. 426 we're right up there Dawenga who's absent through a shoulder injury won the title last year with 415 he did 421 in 2009 when he won it the Olympic title was won with 436 but if you go back down the records you will see that this sort of weight has not been achieved very often Dennis Gottfried of the Ukraine lifted 430 in 1999 and Tarokti now now if he gets this he pushes Makavariani out of the overall medals as I said it's uh, something that we've seen from Ukrainian lifters to come late in the clean and jerk 229 on the bar no but he does have one more opportunity Makavariani clinging on to the overall bronze medal at the moment. So Akayev in the lead with 426. Clock off 421 in silver medal position overall. Makavariani. 409 and when you lift that six out of six you deserve reward so this nine kilo increase is to get ahead it would give uh, Tarokti who's got to come out again as you see clock off if Tarokti uh, comes out and gets this then he would go uh, 
to 410 and because he's heavier than Makabariani, that's why he needs the nine kilo increase so it's high stakes poker for that uh, bronze medal position a position which uh, at one time Bartomi Bonk of Poland could have contested but crucial failures leading the clean and jerk Akayev with 228 clock off in second place with 225 Kim of Korea on 224 so if Tarokti who's coming out on stage now here he is now if he gets this okay he's going to push Makavariani out of the overall medals he's going to also push Kim out of his clean and jerk bronze so a huge lift it's going to affect a lot of placings and people and their medals. Not a bad clean, much better than the previous attempt. Oh, now needs to stand still. That looks pretty good to me. And Tarokli has done it at the third time of asking. And Tarokli moves himself up to 410 kilos. And compare that to what he did in the European Championships this year, 385. That's 25 kilos improvement. And it's the first time since 2009 that he's broken the 400 kilo barrier. He did 405 back in 2009. But now it's the two camps of the Russians here. Clock off, one attempt. A KF, one attempt. 2.32 on the bar. Five kilos short of the world record. This to go back into the lead in the clean and jerk and in the total. Dimitri Klokov adding seven kilos there to go to 428. So Akayev, who's on 426. And Akayev, of course, he weighed in at 104.44, Klokov at 104.60. So this is all about winning the title and he's looking for seven more kilos here. Akayev, 222, 228, now looking for 232, which is four kilos. Four kilos increase to take him to 430. So, this for the championship of the world. If he makes it, he takes it away from his teammate Dmitry Klokov. Otherwise, it goes to the Russian in red. <laughs> and it's Akayev, the European champion, who is now the world champion. 30 kilos and they are standing on their feet here for an outstanding 105 kilo championship with two Russians lifting lift for lift to make it six out of six and Makayev is coach in the background congratulating him less fireworks than clock off but now we can rejoice and Russia have won their first men's title of the 2011 Worlds. 
The goal to Hadzi Murat Akayev, who adds the European title to the European title, adds the world title. And Dmitry Klokov, who was runner-up in the World Championships last year and missed out on body weight, once again forced to settle for the runners-up spot. And how hard is that for Klokov, who in the past has finished third in the world in 2006, third in the world in 2007, the runner-up in 2010, and now again in 2011, and he was the runner-up in the Olympics in 2008. The man who almost gets there, but not quite. But Akayev, well, he has done it. He's now the world and European champion and will look forward, I'm sure, to London 2012 to try and get the one gold medal that he hasn't got, and that is the Olympic gold. He won silver in Athens at 94 kilos. He won bronze in Beijing at 94 kilos. And in the clean and jerk, Khadimur Arakayev takes the gold, Klokov gets the silver, and the bronze medal goes to Torochti, who, as a result of lifting those 229 kilos, is also the bronze medalist overall. And spare a thought for Makabariani, who lifted six out of six, one of his best ever competitions, and just gets bumped out of the medals, but at least he's got a bronze in the snatch. There we have on the screen for you the clean and jerk results. Perfect lifting by the Russians, blow for blow, punch for punch, counter punch, and they give Russia a 1-2. But Tarokhti comes with that traditional Ukrainian rush in the clean and jerk phase to deny Makavariani and the likes of Barthelemy Bonk to take the overall third with another personal best. And Klokov, well, unfortunately for him, it's runners-up spot again. But there you have... 430 kilos there for Khadji Morat Akayev, and that is a super total because if I look back, only twice since these categories were established has 430 kilos have been achieved. In 1999 by Denis Gottfried and again by Andrei Aramnov in the Olympic Games, 436. So that tells you that you've been with us for a very high quality competition. Randy, wow. Absolutely. You know, Nikayev has demonstrated I think he is within striking range of all three world records in his bodyweight class. Watch for it in London. Absolutely. A competition to look forward to at the Olympic Games. So, the Russians who've taken three women's titles and now one men's chance to have a look at this. Now, this... Uh, really did impress me failed it the second time really made a mess of the second attempt so this was much much better the 229 he needed the extra nine kilos to get that kilo ahead you know very wide grip and the clean makes it look awkward off the floor don't you think yeah but he was much and look at this look at this jerk you know it's kind of like a squat a combination of split and squat but you know what once again it's not beauty, it's not style, he makes the lift, that's what really counts. But although you criticise the clean, it was the best of yeah. the cleans that we've seen, and so therefore, I think, you know, well deserved there, but spare a thought for yeah. Makavariani, because when uh, uh, Tarokhti did that, he actually knocked the man who'd done six out of six out of the overall medal position, the Georgian, well, that's, that's tough. But this is Klokov, who did really nothing wrong, was just beaten by the better Russian on the day, 232. You know, he really had to contain himself after he made this lift. I wouldn't have bet he was going to make this. This was a big lift. Very nice success. I'm sure he wishes he could have celebrated this. Yeah, and this is five kilos up on what he lifted in the Olympic Games when he got the silver medal. Yeah. But he's been third, he's been second, he's just never won that elusive big championship gold. He'll be signing pictures, I'm sure, later. But here, here's the man. Love the way he brushed aside the loaders and said, I want at it. Give me that bar. <laughs> Completely disp different disposition to yeah. clock off, but actually, in a way, more in the zone all the way through the competition. Never distracted, totally focused. Taking care of business. Look at that, elbows came close to the knees, huh? And watch this, moment of truth, needs it, makes it, he's the world champion. Add that to a European championship, big lips here. 
Watch for this guy at the Europeans next year and then London at the Olympics. The one medal he now has to get is the gold. He's got Olympic silver, Olympic bronze, world title, European title. The one thing he needs is the Olympic gold. If he gets the records, so much the better, but it's the gold medal that he really wants. Bronze medal in the 94 kilo class.